see. Um, this video here, you probably see from the title of your screen, it's a little bit different. We're actually hunting with an air gun. But before I want to go into that, I want to show you guys the gear of the pellet gun. And a lot of you out there probably want to do the same thing I'm doing. But I understand most of your guns out there ain't shooting good. And I'm going to tell you why. So first off, I'm going to start with what the gun is. It is a Gamo Viper Express. And as you can see, it has a ventilated rib right here and a bead on the front. Well, that is because this pellet gun can shoot pellet or what you call birdshot load, not BB, but a birdshot load with BBs, actual BBs out of your actual shotgun load, so it shoots number nine shot BBs. Has 15 in a load, and you can pick them up for probably five or six bucks, I think, a pack. And around here, the only place that sells them is a small gun shop a decent ways down the road. And um, unfortunately, I had about two packs that I had purchased, uh, purchased from there. And on a move here, I lost them. And this video has actually been in the workings for a really long time. I just haven't got around to it. But the other day, I had a perfect opportunity. I had someone go out and they ended up purchasing uh, 22 caliber Super Points. They're made by Ruger. They purchased me these. These are 17.6. And I also have Gammo downstairs in the gun cabinet. We'll get them out later. And they are a 15.4, I'm wanting to say. Grain, they're in the 15 grains. So, um, this right here is going to follow into your accuracy of your air gun. This is why your air guns probably aren't shooting good. Now, this gun here has a smooth bore barrel. You know, just, so just smooth. No riflings, no nothing. I can never get the pellet that I used to shoot in my rifle barrels to shoot good out of this gun. And I was wondering, well, what in the world? And I'm like, well, smoothbore barrel, maybe that's it. I searched on YouTube for like hours and hours, and unfortunately, I can't refund the video. I was going to link in the description for you guys to watch, because this dude has really good knowledge about them. He says, find a long, a really long, bulky belt, uh, pellet. Well, I put the gammo. I think they're called crossfires. They got a ballistic point on them. You guys will see them later. I put them out there and I put these 22 calibers. Um, super point but made by Ruger. I'll pop a picture of each one on your screen right now. I put them side by side and I could definitely tell that the Ruger's was bigger and bulkier than what the bread fires was. And the little youth hunter I had here yesterday was here and I said, I bet that them uh, super points are going to shoot really good out of this gun. So we shot the gamo in a five shot group and it was about a two inch grouping. And then I took them, I shot a five shot group and it was about a one inch or even under an inch grouping. So right away I said, them's our money right there. That, that right there is a headshot squirrel all day. And um, So I ended up taking a sight of the gun in for the Rugers. Now, you'll always, with an air gun, you'll always have a flyer, what you call flyer. You might shoot three consistent shots and one shot just blows off. And that's fine. That's just a bad pellet. You know, it might be lighter or messed up on the edges. Nothing you can do about that. Always just shoot again, make sure that's where I'm hitting. But as of right now, that gun's dead on. I come upstairs, like I said, I sighted this gun in for 15 yards with each one. Well, with them, I can shoot a red fire, and I think my red fires are shooting just high left. These are just pretty much dead on. I came up here, I shot a shotgun wadding out the window about 30 yards, and I was like, that's perfect. You know, I'm, I'm ready for the woods, but I'm going to at least go out today and shoot this gun a little bit more. Probably throw a five-shot group and then one shot, just to show you guys that it's pretty well consistent, really consistent, enough to go hunting with. And... Yeah, that's be about it. I did a video just now and it was 10 minutes long. It looks like this one here is only four, so that just shows how long I talked last time. Um, I'll tell you guys the scope I'm using. It is a Phoenix or Penny. It's out of three dollars. I got it from uh, China. They had to ship it over here. It has lighted crosshairs. It goes with green and red. You probably can only see the green. Yeah. You can kind of see the green crosshairs lighting on the inside. 
Um, like I said, you guys can have the same exact gun as me right here. Same exact setup, same exact pellet, and your gun will shoot consistently. Each pellet gun pushes out a different force of air and energy. That can be the same pellet gun, but I guarantee you, we shoot them through chronographs and readings. This gun can be completely different. It will be completely different from your gun. So, the fact of the matter is, for a smoothbore barrel, find big bulky pellets. What I found out is that my 17.6 grain or 5 grain, or yeah, 6 grain, shoots the best out of this gun right here. And then, you know, you're under that, it's just blowing all over the place. And I'm sure if I went even heavier, I could get an even tighter group, but I'm just going to stay with six or 17. I love it. It's fast still and it's just perfect. And um, your rifle barrels, I found a video where a guy had, sh he has a mark or a reader thing, he shoves in your barrel and, a, and you can buy them, I think, and it shows you where each turn and whatever, each twist in the barrel will give you a pellet to match that twist and you can buy them and it should be pretty accurate. Now, I'm probably not going to ever find a video again, so just type in air gun rifling and I'm sure you'll find it. That's how I found it. But, uh, like I said, this here and here is smooth bore. This is my first ever smooth bore barrel. I always used rifle air, uh, barreled air guns and really, really good guns right here. I'm telling you, if you get them to shoot good, man, these are perfect pest control and, and when you need squirrels done up out of your uh, tree stand, you can just go up in it and take them out and deer never know you're there. And that's what we're doing today. So, uh, with that all being said, I'm going to flip you guys over to the range and we're going to shoot. I may not have covered everything I wanted to. I don't have nothing written down or nothing. I'm just going off the top of my head. So, I'm sure when we get out there on the range and we start shooting, I'm going to come up with some more theories on how to improve your accuracy with your air gun. But, um, yeah. So, that's about it, as I have right now, to cover on this air gun. Like, again, it's a Gamo uh, Viper Express, and I'm telling you, mean little machine right here. So, that being said, I'll see you. Okay, folk, we have first up the uh, Ruger um, ammo. I'll have to pop a picture on your screen. And I also wanted to mention, I forgot to yesterday, that this gun um, has two metal things. I can't remember the name of them. I'll pull them up and it comes with. I actually lost both of them when uh, on the move when everything flew out. So I'm actually using the plastic ones I wouldn't recommend it because this morning I've used other ones as um as a reload source some of them squished and it's not holding the accuracy as it did yesterday so I may have just screwed everything up I'm not sure I think I found one that holds good enough accuracy but who knows but here we go we're gonna shoot five rounds downrange and uh hopefully you guys can see you can can you see me down on the gun? Yes. Okay. Hang on. So what? Had to. Okay, here we go. Five shots holding. Dead center, only about 20 yards. Dead center, my rest here is just another chair. I'm not gonna talk a whole lot, y'all. I'm basically gonna skip you guys straight through the shots now. So, hopefully, so enjoy. Last shot.
All right, there's five. Now I'm gonna run down, put another target up, and uh, I'll show you guys the results. But now we're gonna be shooting the Gamo Red Fire. I'm wanting to say is what they're called. I'll find them online, I'll show a picture. It's these here, you know, got ballistic tips. So see you guys in a second. All right. So now we're shooting the Gamo rockets. I got a little ballistic tip. I, I'll give you guys a close up here at the end of uh, what they look like. But these are the ones I said shoot super quick out of my gun. Now, before I was shooting closer than what I am now, now we're out here a distance. So these could help. And we're going to find out. They might be what we hunt with. Let's shoot the five groups. See what happens. Whew. Okay, y'all, um, I don't know how many I got on camera, but I can just tell you now, this might be my sixth shot. I'm just going to shoot this last round off. Um, SD air again. I don't know what's going on. If I, if I use my uh, phone, it keeps saying it, but as long as I turn the GoPro on off my head, it don't. So I don't know. We're going to go ahead and go for the last one. There's five rounds down range, and now we're gonna get uh, some targets side by side, and we're gonna show you guys uh, the difference. So here we go. All right, so y'all's probably really confused as to what is going on. So we ended up shooting one time with the Gamo uh, ballistic points, and my GoPro was in 4K video. And every time I look down at my phone, because that's how I start my GoPro, I got the app so I can just be, I can be forever away from the GoPro and turn it on and see, you know, whatever. Well, it kept saying video format, so after a shot, as you guys can see, I jump right back in and literally I'm on the very last six shot. And also, I wanted to cover that. Uh, little nozzle that goes in my barrel that my pellet goes in I had mixed the original one up I had one original one that I always pretty much used ever since I've lost my two little metal ones that they actually come with so I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to go order another one maybe this one's working but I think I'm still gonna go order another one and maybe two so I don't lose it either but them's not the original ones that you're supposed to use for your pellet you're supposed to use a it's like uh I don't know, 10, man, I like 10, I don't know, it's kind of a hard metalish piece, and you shove your pellet down in there, I know people may come out of pop cans too, but I'm sure I probably already popped a picture of them up in the video, if not, I can pull a picture up right now, and of what I'm talking about as a little dial rod thing, um, so that right there was obviously throwing my accuracy off compared to the rest. So I shot and shot and then I, off camera I shot about five more groups. And I mean it's everywhere and I knew that gun was hole for hole. So I'm at this point mad so I come up, I situate my target how I had it the other day. No wind but except this time it's only like 15 yards. But I knew, I said I'm going to flip through I'm going to shoot a two shot group. So I shoot two times with each uh you know, each pellet, which is with the ones, my Ruger pellets is the one I'm shooting now. I wasn't messing with the Gamos. I shot two times with each Ruger uh, pellet um, out of each dial rod. And eventually I got to the very last dial rod in my pocket and I said, this got to be it. I shoot, I start cutting hole for hole, and that's where you guys are about to pick up. I tried to explain this yesterday. I was, you know, antsy to get in the woods, and as you guys can see, it's probably going to be everywhere. And I still suck at, like, talking to the camera. I don't know why I get, like, tongue twisted, and I don't know, my brain goes to the next thing before I even finish something. So, 
if y'all could bear with me here, I tried to explain it the best I could so far, but uh, yeah, I'm just going to jump you guys to after I had shot the next, I think, three group shot and figured out that that's the one I had and I was all excited, so hope y'all enjoy the rest of the video. Alright, so I want y'all to take a look at these groups. I have went back and went through all them little... Uh, you know them little dial things that fit in my barrel i went back with all these right here i went through every single one of these trying to find the one that my gun was sighted in perfectly for and of course i'd have, i don't know i shot probably 30 more times right here and the thing is i ain't got that many pellets so i finally i'm like come on man i know one of them's dead nut center with the scope already i haven't touched the scope all day so finally i found it. it was the last one i picked and look at this shot difference man that we have moved about five yards closer but look boom 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 that was all three touching i was shooting for this and they're all three touching maybe an inch high so i moved down an inch this crease right here is a wee little crease you may not be able to see it I I'm gonna have to go in and uh, change the settings of my GoPro. Um, regardless, I figured it out. Um, the red fire, I know a lot of y'all's running and they probably want me to shoot them again, but we're gonna have to head out to the woods. It's getting late. We need to get on some squirrels. But the red fires out of my gun personally don't shoot good. I already know that because I've shot them right here. And here there's no wind. I, I moved up earlier, we had wind over the hill. So I moved up and I got in an area to where there's no wind. Basically the wind's blocked by the house and the trees. And I shot and now look, I mean it's, we're good. I'm not touching it or losing that other one because it is dead center. I left it shooting one click high. So that way if a squirrel's out there at 10, 15, 20, or no, it'd probably be 20 and 25. I decided then for at least 15, so yeah. So anyway, we're gonna head on in there and We'll get set up, and I'm going to change the settings on this GoPro so it stops filming every five seconds. So, with that being said, I'll catch you guys out in the woods. Hopefully, we have some luck tonight. It should be a decent night. Friday is going to be a real good night, so we'll get back out Friday, too. So, with that being said, I'll catch you guys in the woods. All right, y'all. Um, back at the house, or at the house. About to head out right now. It's about 2.15. If it's making a bunch of staticky noise, I'm trying to hold it real steady. I have the GoPro. It keeps messing up. I have no idea. This is new stuff it's doing to me. I've, I have never witnessed before, so just bear with me tonight. I'm going to try to have this as a second angle, but if it don't, we'll have the main camera on the squirrels, hopefully. And I'm just going to try to get the best film I can for you guys and also bag a couple to put in the old uh, frying pan. So... If you guys want to see a catch uh, catch and cook type deal, you know, it's not an actual catch and cook, just me cooking some squirrels, uh, comment down below, or not comment, just go ahead and like. If we get this uh, 25 likes, and then I'll know, and then I'll go ahead and do one and show you guys how I personally make my squirrels. And, uh, yeah, I tell you what, they're delicious, and so far the GoPro's working, so... With that being said, we better bust a move, get out here, get everything situated, get camera equipment up, and see what we can get down on the ground. So, see y'all soon. Wish me luck. Come on. Fingers crossed we kill us a big 500-point squirrel.
All right, y'all. <clears throat> I just <clears throat> went around due to the fact they kept seeing us, even though we moved. I went around. I made me a, a little makeshift line. I found a bunch of old saplings laying on the ground, so I just took them. They still had leaves on them, so I started throwing them up in the little cubby hole. I smashed a bunch of them in there, and it looks good. I got the ground cleaned. A nice little area in the morning so it looks good now tonight I had the right tube for my gun so I uh, put a pellet in there and usually I was gonna shoot the red fire just to un unload my gun I said you know what there's a squirrel in the tree right now he's inside of it but it's getting kind of dark I figured I'll back out he should stay in there and in the morning well, at least kill him the rest of them all went down over the hill to their nest earlier than what they really you know usually would right now they'd be going back but uh and i shot a leaf right at the very bottom of the tree crack of the gun the leaf flew so that gun is absolutely deadly i'm going to try not to bump the scope try my best not to and uh we're going to get in here about i think shooting lights at seven something so we're we'll gonna get here about 6:40, something right, somewhere in there. And we'll come back. We'll set right there. I cleared the area. It's gonna be dead so quiet. It's supposed to be uh, actually it's supposed to rain in the morning. I forgot. So we may not get out here in the morning. It might be Thursday. So who knows? Fingers crossed it don't rain. We get out here and kill some squirrels. Got really close tonight. Ended up having four in range. But as you guys seen, we ain't got none to uh, eat. So. We'll be back after them, so y'all stay tuned. Pretty fun night, man. I miss doing this. Might be a little hard seeing me this morning. Um, I was going to use the GoPro. It's got better lighting, It was, but it's about dead. I charged it all day yesterday, and well, for at least a half hour, and... Uh, I thought it was fully charged, and uh, when I turned it on just a minute ago, it said low battery. So I was leaving it off until some squirrel action happens. As you guys can see behind me, it's starting to get light. We got about five more minutes until shooting light, and then, uh, you know, what I'm saying squirrels should be in trouble. We ain't hunted yesterday um, due to the uh, rain, but happy Thanksgiving, by the way. This is Thanksgiving morning. Dad went on our annual rabbit hunt this morning, him and a bunch of our family members. I usually go, this is my first time missing it, and I, don't, I can't remember when, but I can't get the thought of squirrels out of my mind. I don't know why, just something about me killing them with this pellet gun, I guess. Um, also, you know, rabbit hunting without snow is difficult really difficult so I usually wait until I get snow but I always hunted um, Thanksgiving just because it was our basically annual hunt all the family goes gets together and we go just like the majority of the families but I didn't go this year he's uh, at the house now they're about to roll out but I'm already back in these woods and we're waiting on daylight buddy I think it should be a real good morning. It is kind of breezy, but them squirrels will be on the ground, so it ain't going to matter. But that's enough of me talking. This is two minutes long, so fingers crossed we uh, get at least two or three this morning. We should. So I'll see you all in a minute. All right, well, we just dusted our first one. Now... The big camera wasn't on. He tried to go straight to this tree, but when he got directly above me, my GoPro would have got him. He was so close. So I'm spamming turn on on my GoPro, and I keep seeing something on my phone. The squirrel's looking right at me. Well, eventually, he just sees me and takes off. <clears throat> he got out there on a limb about, I don't know, 10 yards, and my GoPro still ain't running at this point. So I do some little... And he stops. As soon as he did, I put the crosshairs right on the shoulder because he was laying flat on the branch. I couldn't see much of his head. Shot, and it thumped him, and he spun around the tree. And he took off down the tree. And then 
I could hear him in the leaves moving. So I'm hoping there's going to be enough blood to trail him because I have trailed him like this before. I've had to trail him. Um, it should have been a really good hit, I think. You know, I just caught like lungs or something. And it's just going to take it a second, you know. Just like how you can long shoot a deer, they're basically dead. Or, or they're hit, you know, hits them so quick they don't know what happened. Crack of the gun, I heard that smack, that's a familiar crack. I think I hit him. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to sit here for like another five minutes. I've done seen three or four. He's the first one that come right over me like they should. He, I was hoping he'd come to the stick. I think later, once they all start getting out of the trees, they'll start moving this way towards these sticks. But I figured I'd update you guys. I did shoot him. It wasn't on film. I wish it was. Camera's right here. Squirrel. Was here in the tree above me. He went over to that big red tree. And that red tree's probably 20 yards. As soon as he got up in it, pop, I cracked him. But I'm going to give it about another five minutes. That's all it should take. I'm going to sneak up to the edge. Look down over. Hopefully we got blood or we see him laying. So stay tuned. I'm hoping. Or I hope I just missed and that was uh, the hit of the tree I heard, you know. So let's see. Right, here's an update for you guys. That deer slowly worked off. Has no idea what happened or what went wrong. That's why I said I use these pellet guns. I've been a 22. She would have busted out of here. But uh, I'm down here on the second shot. The first shot of the squirrel that I just took, I missed. And I even said in the video, I said missed him. You know, because I could see him spin around the tree, and I knew where I aimed. I aimed about where the neck and head was. And uh, I shot. I mean, he's only eight to ten yards. The crack of the gun. I watched him spin around. I said, if he's hit, he ain't going nowhere. And anyways, I missed him. I come down here, and as you guys can see right here, the big tree that the squirrel's behind is just right there. That's the squirrel. The first one that we shot. He was up in the top of it. We shot. I'm wanting to say that we hit him. You know, really bad. But then again, we could have missed. I've been down in here. I've walked in these bush piles. Now I'm going to do like a 30-yard loop around me. And I can say, honestly, if he's not laying within this 30-yard uh, loop, he's not dead. You know, or not dead. I, I didn't hit him. I guarantee you I never hit him in. I mean, I'm shooting a 17-grain pellet, okay? Now picture this. Back in the day, when I first started air gun hunting, I was only shooting, I think, a 12 or 13-grain 22 caliber and the 8 grain 177 so just imagine the oomph that this gun's hitting them with 
And also, what I found is the littlest bit of movement of this gun will throw my aim forever. I shot some knots. I shot twice, missed them completely. And I wasn't holding steady. I ran back to my chair, sat down, pop smacked it. I got up, walked down over this hill, put another pellet in, picked me a tree about 20 yards, leaned up against a tree, took my time, took my time, pop cut it. So that just goes to show what I'm doing is I'm getting excited and I'm shooting too quick. You know, basically as soon as my crosshairs touch them, I'm blasting. And uh, in reality, the, you know, 22, yeah, I can probably do that and kill them. In reality, with the 22, you need as much stabilization as you can get with a pellet gun. You know, um, before I was basically freehanding everything. Well, I was. I didn't have nothing to lean into. But uh, I've been down in here, I'm going to do a circle, and then we're going to wait about another, another half hour. Set to about nine up here. We'll go back, we'll get something to eat. And actually, you know, today's Thanksgiving, I don't know if I'll get out on an evening hunt, but if not, I'll try to get out one more time tomorrow, Friday. And we're pretty much going to hunt all day tomorrow. To tell you all the truth, we're going to hunt all day. But, uh, yeah, I figured I'd update you guys. That's three minutes on this video, so hopefully next time you guys see me, we'll uh, be having the camera on another squirrel. The GoPro's dead, if you guys don't know already. I can't remember if I told you. So it won't be on at least. If I got tonight, it'll be on, but if not, it won't be on until I go hunting again. But I'm going to do a loop around this bank, a loop around here, and if he's dead, I'm hoping we find him. But I think I missed him. I, I think what I heard was a tree smacking the ground, you know. So, I'll see you all in a minute. Alright. So, I have some bad news. Um, but I guess it wouldn't be bad. I think I did miss him. I'm pretty sure I missed him compared to the gun shooting. Um, ended up... Walking down and around there, didn't find nothing. And, you know, like I said, last time you guys heard from me just now, I said, oh, I cut a knot out. But then there's another side of me that keeps saying, shoot that gun again, shoot that gun. And I kept shooting. I'd shoot high, I'd shoot again, I'd shoot left, and then I'd shoot again and cut the hole. Um, and honestly, I don't think it's me now, so... Just to be sure, we're going to go ahead and pack everything up. I'm going to go to the house, take a target out. Now, before, like I say, I sighted the gun in about 15 yards, maybe less than that. It was close to 15. It's still morning. No, there's some wind, but not much. What we're doing, we're going to put this target out there at 25, 10, or 20, 25 yards. And if I can't get a tight gra a group with a gun... We're hanging it up. Um, these are the heaviest pellets I ever had for the gun. And quite frankly, if I can't get a pattern out at 25 yards of five shot and they're all three touching, or all five really in close, I'm not going to waste no more money on this, you know, gun no more. I'm just going to go ahead and buy a 177. I know one gun, and it's really, really cheap, y'all. It's real cheap, and it's probably by far the best accurate See gun, that's an 880 power line. Something I grew up with in old Daisy. I'll just go pick me up one of them, put me a nice, put this scope on it, and I guarantee you a lot of money. I'll smack squirrels' heads all day because I used to all the time when I had one. Well, I had a lot of them. I broke a lot of them. The stocks are shitty, and the, the bolt, I was hard on them. I'd always bolt them hard. And I also didn't oil when you're supposed to. Every 100 shots, I'd shoot a 1,000. And it'd bust the cylinder out. But this has been a long enough talking video this morning. There's more talking than there was hunting. I was rather got more hunting. But like I say, I'm not going to shoot with a faulty gun. I'm going to shoot some, and I'll pick you guys up, let you know what, uh, what we come up with. There's no sense in me sitting here and shooting at squirrels and actually take a chance on wounding one. The only one that I think I did wound this morning was the one that was up there, but then again, I think I hit the tree because I'm telling you, if I hit him with this pellet, it's got to kill him. That's huge.
but they are tough. So that's enough of me. I'm going to go ahead and head out, and I'll see you guys in a minute. Well, uh, we just shot about 55, 60 times, and well, <clears throat> well, we just shot about 55, 60 times. Um, again, it's not holding a good pattern at all. It's probably a three inch pattern I'd show you guys a target but it's just a waste of time it, it definitely ain't good enough and accurate enough to take squirrel hunting here there's only three things I can figure out here option A is this pellet is a little bit uh, just a tad too light maybe if I went up two more grains or a grain in pellet size it might shoot really accurate is what I'm thinking because at 12 yards, I can stack shells at hole for hole, and I can take the red tip and shoot all over at 12 yards. I can take the red tip at 20 yards and shoot all over. I can take them at 12, and my Rugers, the 17 grains at 12 yards, and I guarantee you I'll hit hole for hole every single time. Um, so what I'm thinking is the pellet is just a smidge too light. Now... Now you're going to be start working with money. This is when your money is going to be coming into play. Once you hit that 20, uh, you know, 20 ounce pellet range or whatever they are, 20 grain pellet range, that's when you're going to start forking money in your air gun. Okay. So there's two options. I can fork money into this or... I can go do something else and we can still do some squirrel hunting. Unfortunately, it won't be for a minute, but I don't know. I know the gun's not worthy of it, you know, ethical enough to kill them. If I get them at 12 yards, put a corn pile, yeah, I'm fine. They'll come right there, but, you know, basically I get them 12 to 15 yards from me. And I'm hoping to have the gun dead on at 20. If I could have shot down there and I was shooting for a small circle, I would hit it. And then I shoot again, I hit here, shoot again, hit up here. And that's what I was looking for, inconsistency. So those are my options, basically. This is what I'm coming up with about the gun. Um, I know for a fact, up close, it shoots good. So I think if I went to a little heavier grain pellet, um, I'd be in business. But like I say, it's going to cost way more money i'm talking that's when you're gonna start forking a good dime out of your pocket to start shooting you know right now it's really cheap i think i can pick a pack of these super points up 17 grains at walmart for three bucks for 200 shells but once you start messing with them big grain pellets that's when you start spending money in air guns so as of now i'm gonna go with uh plan b I think I'm going to go ahead and buy, I'm going to try 22 grains in this gun. And if they don't shoot this, that will be the last thing I shoot out of this gun probably. It'll probably just set in my gun cabinet. Um, but I think a 20 grain pellet to 22 would work real good. So I'm about to get online here and I'm going to find some and order a pack of them. And uh, should be in business. So, with that, I hope y'all enjoyed this little squirrel hunting series. I understand. I think I got a few on film. I don't think I got the one on film this morning. I tried my best, but, hey, what can you do, man? Four minutes. We've been sitting here talking. That's two talking episodes I put out for you guys. Now we got Monday deer season, and we had deer in there this morning. I actually bumped two of them before daylight, and uh, I think that little doe was one of them. That, uh, the one that come back around the bank, she was one of them I spooked out this morning. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure they must have went over and <clears throat> she must have bedded on that bank and then got up and slowly moved my way after daybreak. But it's a bummer. It really, I'm glad that I did this because I would still be out there squirrel hunting, wounding squirrels probably if I wouldn't have. Because I'm within a squirrel's vicinity of his body. I'm shooting in a group that big, but. 
I want to at least aim on his head and hit him in the head and aim on his neck, hit him in the neck. You know, I want it to be spot on, kind of like a 22. And I got 22 rifles. It's just, I don't know. I love hunting with a pellet gun. I'm sure we might pick our pellet or 22 up, but right now we're too close to gun season. We'll have to wait until after gun season before I start rifle hunting with 22s. It's Monday, so what, three days from now? Um, our gun season in Ohio opens up for shotgun. So, with that being said, that's going to be the end of this. And uh, thank you all for watching. If you do, you know, if you all enjoying the content, share it with your friends and stuff. And uh, subscribe if you want. Um, hit that thumbs up button. Let me know you all like this type of content. And with that, uh pretty sad i guess but today's thanksgiving so i'm gonna keep the spirit up and go see some family members and i suppose uh we'll get back after the hunting next week so we'll see y'all soon and good luck to all you hunters out there i forgot <laughs> see ya i still got face paint on too